All right, let's get to how we determine if we're gonna get a refund, which is always so fun, even though it means it was your money the whole time, but still feels good, or if you're gonna to have to owe. So tax credits and withholdings. You may qualify for various tax credits. Tax credits are subtracted from your owed taxes. Uh, directly. All right, some tax credits are refundable, meaning that if your credits are greater than the taxes owed, you will receive the excess. Um, so some examples of tax credits are child tax credit, earned income credit, child and dependent care credit, American Opportunity, Lifetime Learning, Energy Credits, like, you know, if you have solar paneling, maybe you can write that off and so forth. Um, yeah, if you have a good AC, all those wonderful things. In addition to tax credits, we deduct withholdings from your owed taxes. So withholdings are money employers take out, take money from our paychecks, which is so hard once you start seeing that. <laughs> and they send it directly to the federal government. basically acting like a forced tax savings plan. So why they do that is because, like, say at the end of the year, you owe 30 grand. Are we really going to save 30 grand as the year went on? Probably not. So if they take it out monthly, it's forcing you to pay throughout the year so you don't get hit as hard and they're not really relying on humans to save that much money. How much will be withheld... or taken from your paycheck will depend on how you fill out your W-4 form. Uh, the more allowances, the less you will have withheld. So this is a personal preference. Um, like for me, I take out zero allowances, so then more is withheld. So then at the end of the year, like in April, I can be like, oh, I'm getting, hopefully it doesn't happen every time, but more back. Um, it's too hard of a hit for me to pay when April comes around. But some people need the money every month more, so they might claim more allowances. If the amount after subtracting your credits and withholdings is negative... Okay, so you have your taxable income, you're going to take away the credits and withholdings and you get a negative value, you will receive a refund. If the amount after subtracting your credits and withholdings is positive, you will owe that amount. All right, so let's put this to use. Jennifer and Lewis are married and file their taxes jointly. So that's important, okay? And they're married. So that's going to let us know where to look in that chart. Jennifer has 68,000 in wages and Lewis has 56,000 in wages and they earned 1320 in interest from a savings account. So that's everything they earned. So that's your gross income. So and they're filing together. So we're going to combine. So sixty-eight thousand plus fifty-six thousand plus thirteen twenty. And using good, a good old calculator again, I really want to encourage you all to use these dollar signs because it is units. Uh, we get a hundred and twenty-five thousand. And 320. Now we want to know their adjusted gross income, in other words, AGI, and um, they contributed 5300 to their tax deferred 401k. So remember, that's going to lower their income. So we're going to take that away so they're not taxed on it. 
So I'm going to take away 5,300 and we get $120,020. Okay, so that's their AGI. Now, we also know that they did all this work and they figured out their itemized deduction was 18750 But before I go and just take that away from my AGI, I want to compare it to the table to see if they should take the standard or should they do the itemize. So again, let's look at their status. They're married and they're filing jointly. Married, filing jointly. That deduction's 24,000. So I much rather take that, because again, it's gonna take my in their income lower. So I won't be, they, I always wanna take this on. They will not be taxed as much. So we are going to do standard because it's larger. Determine their taxable income. So I'm going to take their AGI and I'm going to take away the deduction. And we get, um, let's see, $96,020. Okay, so that's their taxable income. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold off on reading E for a second, and we just have to figure out how much they owe in taxes, like we did in the previous problem. However, now I'm giving you a new table, just to make you feel okay with looking at different tables. I'm gonna go ahead, I already, so you're going to get a large table where you have to figure out which one to look at. And I already pulled it apart for us just to save paper. So married filing jointly. So I'm going to just look in this section. And I'm going to look at my income where it says 96000 which looks like that is right here. So this table is actually easier to use than the previous one. So I, like I said, I'm going to be using this kind of table just because I think it's easier to read and do. Um, okay, so what this table says is it's $8,907 uh, $8, plus 22% of anything over the $77,400. So let's make sense of that. So you know no matter what, they're going to be taxed $8,907 plus any excess. So they earn $96,020. Anything over the $77,400 will be 22%. So... Hopefully right there you can recognize that that's a little bit easier than the other one. It's like one less step, I guess. But um, Okay, so remember, you want to use parentheses. They're your best friend. So make sure you put this in parentheses, whatever thing you're using to calculate. And um, I end up getting $13,003.00 and 43 cents. So what this is telling me is this is what they owe. However, remember we talked about withholding. So, you know, as every month passed or how many times they get paid, they had withheldings. And so they might not have to owe that much. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what their withholdings are. So they had 3,500 tax credits for whatever reason. And then at, throughout the year, their paycheck was deducted 5,200. So to figure out if they're going to owe or get a refund, we take what they owe and we take away the credits and we take away what was taken out of their paycheck all year. 
And so when you do this in your calculator, we end up getting $4,303.40. Now, going back to what we were talking about before we did the example, I'm just going to go back here real quick. It said if you get a positive, it's what they owe. So sadly, they owe $4,303.40 in taxes, in federal taxes. That's all we're going to focus on in this class. Okay. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is maybe pause the video and try example four on your own and then see if you did it right. Before you pause me and leave me, I just want to change something. E, it should be 1,240 was withheld. Okay, so pause or keep listening and we can do this one together. Bree is single with two children. In 2018, she earned $38,200 from wages as an administrative assistant. She contributed $3,500 in a tax-deferred savings account. And then she went ahead and itemized to see if she could save more money that way, and she found out that her deductions added up to $19,500. So I read the whole thing there, so... Um, to help you maybe um, break this up. So her gross income is solely what she earned. Well, the only thing she earned were her wages. So her gross income is 38,200. Now her AGI, remember, that's where we take our gross and we take away what we, any contributions we made. And so I end up getting 34,700. Now what is her taxable income? So I need to figure out what her deductions are before I say that. So let's see, we have 19,000 in itemized, but she's single with two children. So I'm going to look at single, that gives me 12,000, so I'm not going to choose that. But she has two children, so we can maybe look at head of household, that's 18,000. Well, that's still less than her itemized. So I will choose the itemized, because that will give her more money. So I'm going to take her AGI and take away her itemized deductions. And you do that in a calculator and we'll get 15,200. Okay. Now we have to figure out what her total taxes are. So from the tax table, we now for me, to make these notes, I went ahead and I found the head of household category. So what you'll have to do on your own, because you're going to have all of these all together in one sheet, you have to figure out which filing status they fit into. So I just cut and pasted just the portion I needed. So head of household, um, I'm going to look where it's 15,000 fits in. So it looks like right here. So this says... 1360 plus 12% anything over. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to put D here. All right, so it's 1360 dollar sign <laughs> plus anything over. So I'm going to go ahead and take how much is taxable and take away the 13,600. But that's at, I like to put a zero before my decimal actually, at 12%. Again, 
I'm encouraging you, parentheses, because otherwise you won't multiply everything by the 12%. So when you do that in your calculator, and maybe I'll just do that just to make sure. All right, so I'm going to do 1360. Um, plus parenthesis. 15, 200 minus the 13,600. Close that parenthesis, multiply it by the percentage, which is 0. 0.112. So we get 1,552. One thousand five hundred and fifty-two. Okay, so that's what she owes. But now we're going to take into effect her credits and what has been withheld from her paycheck throughout the year. So I'm going to take um, fifteen fifty-two. Take away twelve forty take away her credits. And when we do all of that, again, I need to be consistent, <laughs> dollar signs. When we do all of that, we get negative 4,293. Now that negative is like such a good feeling because that means she will get back or get a refund four thousand two hundred and ninety three dollars even though that is her money it still feels so good when you get a refund <laughs> okay good luck and reach out with any questions if you have any